Okay, let's see, our next question is on phytic acid from Joseph. Is phytic acid harmful or of benefit? Is it really necessary to jump through the hoops of soaking and sprouting before consuming nuts and seeds? What do you think on this, wife? What's your gut sense? A lot of people do find benefit when they when they soak and sprout. For sure, and I would throw this under the it depends category. And so uh, phytates and even, uh, gosh, there's this stuff out of rice, I wanna say, IP6, which is kind of one of these um, bonding uh, chemicals, kind of uh, uh, chelation type chemicals. They can be beneficial in some circumstances and they can be a bastard in other circumstances. Uh, Georgia Ede, who is a psychiatrist and, and really incredibly knowledgeable on this stuff, has some great studies where individuals would eat something like uh, uh, oysters which are very high in zinc and it would uh, you would quantify the amount of zinc in the oysters then the person would consume it and they would actually do like some plasma zinc analysis so they can they can show okay the before oyster plasma zinc was here and post oyster plasma so it's showing that you're absorbing it or mm -hmm. or it's magically appearing in your bloodstream one or the other then she showed eating the same oyster meal but but with either say like fruit or um corn tortillas. The fruit does not have phytates in it. The corn tortillas have quite a lot. And the corn tortillas plus the zinc source basically made the zinc absorption zero. Hmm. I mean, it, it, it just gutted it. So th this is one of these things that's really interesting. And in looking at a lot of the Weston A. Price stuff, um, traditional cultures bent over backwards to soak and sprout and ferment and process grains, legumes, and even dairy for the most part. And so um, I think that there was some really uh, 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 good wisdom to all that. And I it kind of dovetails around on another piece around this kind of emerging story around like the carnivore concept and whatnot. And I, I could make a case that, uh, how do I want to say this? Um, the amount of plant material that we eat is allowable only up to the point that it displaces animal products. At some point, the overconsumption of plant material could potentially cause nutrient depletion. And I know this is going to be like a super controversial topic, but when you, when you look at, uh, say, just things like spinach, they may contain different nutrients that may be valuable and they may look like they're, they're in a large amount, particularly from a nutrient density standpoint, like a, a percentage of like folate per, per calorie. But the thing is, the plant-based materials are not that absorbable and oftentimes have constituents in them like phytates that are antagonistic towards their absorption. Uh, these things can also interfere with, uh, they're basically protease inhibitors, so they inhibit the ability to break down protein, both plant and animal protein. So, uh, you know, again, like how important is it? I, I think it boils down a little bit to um, individual situations, but I think to the degree that people can get away with not doing this is reflective of all the other right stuff they're doing. And also I, I think that it, it's, you're just kind of like beating your system a little bit. Like there, there's some pressure testing that's occurring there. So like it, uh, if you're going to do bread, I would do something like an Ezekiel bread that's been soaked and sprouted and all that type of stuff. A lot of people are finding these uh, ancient grains like the einhorn wheat and then soaking, sprouting, doing the, the sourdough mix that, that mm -hmm. helps to break down the gluten and all that stuff. Although there's some great literature indicating that not a lot of celiacs still react to like the einhorn wheat, even after it's gone through all of that stuff. And I'll mm -hmm. be completely honest, even though the Weston A. Price stuff is pretty cool, I think that this is still why a lot of people are pretty fucked up in that scene because they're just religiously dogmatic about having these foods and they don't realize that even some pasture dairy Can may be problematic for some people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's super context driven. And this is again, where if somebody has general problems or they're just wanting to, um, ask a question, if they may be grain dairy or, or, or uh, legume reactive, like pull them out for 30 days, reintroduce and see how you do. But I would, say that to the degree that you process these things with these traditional methods, it's definitely going to improve the nutrient value of those foods, and it's going to decrease the likelihood of damaging the nutrient value of other foods. 